Story Chapter 20 The Chinese Princess While the above events were happening in the capital of King Shazamin, the two gods Dan Hash and Kash Kash were brought back to bed in the castle where the Chinese king had imprisoned her. Waking up the next morning, the Chinese princess turned to the right, turned to the left, and when she did not see Prince Camarazamin next to her, she cried out to her slaves, causing them to rush back and gather around her bed. The nurse stood at the head of the bed and asked her what she needed and what happened to her. Tell me said the princess the boy that I love with all my heart, lay next to me last night, how is he now? Princess the nanny replied we don't understand anything. She said it clearly. That is said the princess a handsome and extremely adorable boy, sleeping next to me last night. I caressed him for a long time and tried everything to wake him up, but to no avail. I want to ask you guys where he is. Princess the nanny said again perhaps you want to make fun of us. Please wake up princess. I speak very seriously the princess argued and I want to know where you are right now. But, Princess the nanny emphasized you were alone when we put you to bed last night and no one came to sleep with you. We know that clearly. The Chinese princess couldn't restrain herself anymore. She grabbed the nanny's hair, slapped and plunged. You will have to speak, you old witch. Otherwise I will beat you to death. The nurse struggled to escape the princess's hands and ran all the way to the queen's palace, the princess's mother. She had a swollen face and tears streaming down her face to see the queen. The queen was extremely surprised and asked who had left her breast in such a tattered state. Your Majesty the Queen. The nurse said please watch the princess treat me like this. She would have beaten me to death if I hadn't managed to escape. Then she told the whole story of why the princess was so angry. Hearing this, the queen felt both surprised and sad. You see, the nanny added the princess has truly completely lost her mind. Her order can be seen clearly if you take a little time to visit her. The Chinese queen was very interested in the story she had just heard because she loved her daughter very much. She forced the nurse to take her immediately to the princess. Queen Scheherazade wanted to continue but saw that the sky had already begun to lighten. She was silent and the next night she said to the Indian emperor, Oh, 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 oh. your majesty. The Chinese queen came to the palace where the princess was being restrained, sat down next to her daughter and after asking about her health, healthy, she asked her why she was angry and beat the nanny. Daughter she said that is not good. A princess of a big country like you should not be allowed what is, my queen, said the princess, I see clearly that you are also here to make fun of me. But let me make it clear to you that I will not feel at peace as long as I am not married. Kiss the lovely knight who lay with me last night. Surely the queen must know where he is. I beg you to let him come back here. My daughter said the queen you surprise me. I don't understand what you're saying. The princess no longer has any manners. Your majesty, she said, the king? your father and your mother, have punished you so that you get married when you don't want to. Now that wish has come, and I am determined that my husband must be the knight I told you about, otherwise I will commit suicide. The queen gently told her daughter, My daughter, you know very well that you are the only one here and no man can come in. But, instead of listening, the princess interrupted. Her words and struggling with angry gestures caused the queen to sadly retreat and go back to tell everything to the king. The Chinese king wanted to know the truth for himself, 
so he immediately went to the princess's residence and asked her if what he had just learned was true. Your Majesty said the princess, I only ask that you please return to me the husband who lay next to me the night before. Star? My daughter the king was stunned, did someone sleep with you last night? So what is it? Your Majesty the princess did not let the king continue you asked if someone slept with me. He himself knew it clearly. That's the most handsome knight under the sky. Please give him back to me, please don't refuse. Let your father believe she continued that I saw that night, that he lay with me, that I caressed him, that I tried to wake him up but couldn't, then please. Dad, look at this ring. The princess held out her hand and the Chinese emperor didn't know what to say when he looked at the ring and realized it was a man's ring. But because he couldn't understand everything she said and he locked her up because he thought she was crazy, now he believed even more that she was crazy. So, he didn't say anything more because he was afraid she would do something wrong. If she was aggressive towards him or anyone who came near, he had her tied up tightly and only allowed the wet nurse to come near and take care of her, and the door to the chamber was strictly guarded. The Chinese emperor was deeply saddened by the misfortune of the princess, whom he thought was seriously deranged. He thought of every way to treat her. He summoned the courtiers and, without specifying the princess's illness, declared, If there is someone among you who is skilled in treating the princess and making her cured, I will marry me to be your wife and you will be the heir to the throne, succeeding the throne after I die. The desire to marry a beautiful princess and the hope of ruling a powerful country like China had a great impact on the mind of an old Mandarin present at that time. Because he was a magician with strong skills, he thought he could succeed, so he immediately went to the king to ask for treatment. I accept the king said but I want to warn you in advance that I will have your head beheaded if you fail in treatment. It is unfair for you to receive such a large reward if you succeed without having to risk any loss on your part if you fail. What I say to you is also what I want to say to everyone who volunteers after you. In case you do not accept such conditions, it means you will not succeed. The Mandarin accepted the conditions and the king himself led him to the princess. The princess covered her face when she saw the Mandarin. Dear father, she told him why did you suddenly bring here a man that I do not know and that the religion forbids me to see? Girl? The king said you should not be upset about this person's presence. It was one of the great Mandarins in the court who wanted to propose to me. Father, the princess said that is not the person you gave me in marriage but I accepted the ring I am wearing as a gift. I hope you will think it is not good for me to accept someone. Elsa's invitation. The Mandarin expected the princess to say and do crazy things. He was very surprised to see her so calm and speaking properly, and he knew very well that she was not crazy at all, other than a strong love that had been formed on a very well-grounded basis. He did not dare to arbitrarily present it to the king. Surely the king could not bear the fact that the princess loved someone who was not the person he wanted her to marry. He prostrated himself at the king's feet. Your majesty, he said after what I have heard, treating the princess is completely useless. I don't have any medicine to cure that disease and my life depends on your majesty's will. The king was upset about the minister's helplessness and that this official was causing him trouble, so he had him beheaded. A few days later, in order to avoid being blamed for not paying enough attention to finding ways to treat the princess's illness, the king ordered an announcement throughout the city that if there was a physician, an astrologer, 
or a magician who could many people have experience in curing the princess's insanity, so she should come and ask for an opinion, on the condition that she will lose her head if not cured. He also had this issue promulgated in all the main cities of the country and in all the royal courts of the neighboring countries. The first person to arrive was an astrologer and magician. The king let a servant lead him to the place where the princess was forbidden. The astrologer pulled from his pocket a tube used to see stars, a small sphere, a stove, various inhalants, a copper bottle and many other items. He asked to bring fire. The Chinese princess asked what all those tools meant. Princess the magician replied that is to catch the ghost that is haunting the princess, put it in this bottle and throw it to the bottom of the sea. This damn astrologer! The princess exclaimed you should know that I don't need any of those things, that I am very clear-headed and that you are the one who is crazy. If you really have the courage, then bring the person you love here to me, that's the best thing you can do for me. Princess said the astrologer if that's the case, then it's not up to me but you have to wait for your father the emperor. He put everything he had just pulled out back into his pocket, annoyed that he had so lightly accepted treatment for an imaginary illness. When the eunuch brought the astrologer back before the Chinese emperor, the astrologer did not wait for the eunuch to report, but boldly stated himself. Your Majesty, according to what you have announced and confirmed yourself, I was convinced that the princess was crazy, so I was sure that with the secrets in hand, I could bring her back to her mentally sane state. But it didn't take long for me to discover that she had no other illness besides infatuation, and that my art had not yet reached the level of treating the disease of love. The king himself, who has the advantage over everyone else, can immediately cure the princess's illness by allowing her to marry the husband she requires. The king considered this astrologer insolent and sentenced him to death. In order not to bore your majesty with duplicate events, I would like to say right away that there were fifty astrologers, physicians and magicians who shared the same fate. Their heads were hung in front of the city gate. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.